The 40 Meter Ham Radio Band is one of our most popular bands because it's open 24 hours a day. But like other HF bands, it largely depends on Mother Nature to dictate where our signals go and how far they travel. There seems to have been a mysterious change that's taken place to this band. But first of all, let's take a look at the antenna options and what is best suited for this particular band. We'll deal with the mystery part a bit later in this video. Welcome to the Waters and Stanton Ham Radio Channel, presented by Peter Waters. I've operated on the 40 metre band over the years, both at the bottom of the band on CW and further up on SSB. And I've become quite familiar with this band and how it varies time to time, both year to year and month to month, etc. But there's no doubt about it that the popularity is there because it's open 24 hours a day. The 40 metre band actually was the very first ham radio band I came across as a youngster. I built a two valve regenerative receiver reaction tuning and I discovered ham radio signals. I didn't realise at the time, but I was listening to the 40 metre band and I was listening to AM signals. That was about 1959. We can summarise the 40 metre band by saying that during the daylight hours it's predominantly short skip. That signals between 100 miles and say 500 miles. And during the evening, the darkness, the uh, propagation extends quite dramatically, um, quite easily to three or four thousand miles across to the states and uh, in conditions of right and particularly when we've got the grey line propagation which is dusk and uh, dawn uh, down into the Pacific. And this uh, daylight restriction on range is largely dictated by the D layer which has quite high absorption on low angle signals during the daylight hours so that's why the band becomes short skip during the daylight hours but short skip is very popular because it's a band where you can have a natter with guys around the UK usually with good signal strengths and uh, you can explore the band at night for DX so what sort of antenna is suitable for the 40 meter band. Well, there's two basic choices for antennas. You can have a vertical antenna or a horizontal antenna. Horizontal antennas for 40 meters are quite popular because they're easy to erect, a bit of wire down the garden, broken in the middle, fed with a bit of coax and you're on the air. And it really doesn't matter how high or how low the antenna is above the ground. And you'll hear a lot of signals on 40 meters during the day with guys all over the UK putting in good signals and that seems to work quite well. So what about a vertical antenna because if you want to work DX a vertical antenna will provide lower angle of radiation. Well that's largely true but there are one or two restrictions. First of all a vertical antenna does tend to pick up more noise. That's not, uh, it's not disputed at all. It's a fact that a vertical antenna will pick up more noise. And uh, how much noise it picks up really depends on the location you're putting the antenna into. If you're in a sort of an urban situation, you may get noise from next door or your own electrics. If you're lucky enough to have a big garden, then maybe you could put the, put the antenna further down the garden and you won't have too much of a problem. So it would seem to be that a vertical antenna is good for distance work because it's got low angle radiation. So I suppose the, ch the obvious choice is to have a horizontal antenna during the day and a vertical antenna during the night. That covers both long distance and short distance. Well, it doesn't always actually work out that way. And there's been a number of tests in recent times, a number of articles published on YouTube and written in, in ham radio magazines showing that actually a vertical antenna is not necessarily the best antenna for 40 meters. Now that particularly applies to daytime operation and that's not dif difficult to understand because if a vertical antenna doesn't have much um, a high angle radiation, it's predominantly low angle radiation, then quite clearly the signal during the day is not going to go very far at all. There's nothing much going fairly high angle radiation which the D layer would let through and the low angle signal that would normally travel across uh, the globe and put you in touch with signals on the other side of the, uh, the world, well, 
those signals are heavily absorbed by the D-layer. So during the day, it means to say that a vertical antenna would, generally speaking, give pretty poor results. And that's the case. I know a number of um, operators uh, that operate portable, they use vertical antennas, but given the choice on 40 metres, they'd rather have a horizontal antenna because there's a dramatic difference in signal strength. And that's because the band is really supporting high angle radiation and you're trying to get signals across or to make contacts with an antenna which is providing low angle radiation. So really and truly a horizontal antenna wins hands down during the day. What about during the night? Well, during the night, the vertical antenna should come into its own. But you know, it doesn't always seem to work out that way. I've operated on 40 metres, as I said in the beginning, uh, extensively since I was first licensed, really. And there's no two ways about it that although a vertical antenna can, can compare reasonably well with a horizontal antenna when we're talking about DX, it never seems to be better than a horizontal antenna. And inevitably, signals still aren't quite as good on a vertical antenna as a horizontal antenna. Now, if you put your horizontal antenna really low to the ground, probably you, you may well find that for Super DX, the vertical antenna will work better. But generally speaking, the horizontal antenna still seems to outperform the vertical antenna. Now, I've covered this aspect in previous videos, and I'd be interested here from guys around the world whether you find that... Basically, a horizontal antenna seems to outperform a vertical antenna. And I, the reason I put this question to you is because um, in the past I've had lots of contacts um, with ZL. And uh, I know in ZL and VK, verticals seem to work pretty well. But verticals don't seem to work quite so well in the northern hemisphere, or at least in the uh, part of the globe that I live in, which is in the UK, um, which is Western Europe. And I've always found that a horizontal antenna seems to work better than a vertical antenna. And one of the interesting um, propositions is that maybe it's to do with the polarisation of the magnetic field. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not. It seems to be something that is worth investigating further. So, for 40 metres, a vertical antenna will not perform very good during the day. It will work better at night, but probably not as good at night as a dipole. Now, I don't want to put you off using the vertical antenna because very often vertical antennas is the only option. Um, but uh, my experience and from others, I've seen reports, it does seem to, see, seem to suggest that a horizontal antenna is the better choice. What do the top DXs use? Well, a number of DXs do use um, a combination of vertical antennas, but I think in general the main advantage of that is not so much forward gain as it is rejection of signals off the back or off the sides. And no two ways about it, that if you can reduce uh, the noise or the signals from the back and the sides you get better listening experience. But I'm not sure that the forward gain is that much greater than just using a single vertical. And it then suggests that even with the extra gain that you get with a combination of verticals, does that beat a dipole? I don't know. The only way to try, try it out is to try it out. Um, but the fact is that a lot of the top DXs use Yagis. Now, the idea of a Yagi at 40 metres is out of the question for most of us. But it's a fact that some of the top DXs use Yagis for DX and I guess they've tried and tested the alternative which would be a vertical or a combination of verticals. So the jury's out really in some parts of the world. As far as I'm concerned I think that a horizontal antenna is better than a vertical antenna for general operation on 40 meters. You may, you may disagree with me and uh, you may come back and say well this is not what I found but it'd be interesting to see what comments we get um, on the comments uh, below this video, see what uh, people's experience are. But the 40 meter band is very po popular for um, portable operation. Actually, I've heard quite a few good mobile signals on 40 meters, and uh, it does ask the question well, if a mobile um, uses a vertical antenna, 
how come they're put, put in some pretty good signals during the day? Well, I think the answer is that actually um, a mobile system is doesn't only comprise the whip, it also comprises the body of the car. And if you imagine the uh, car as being part of a dipole, half the dipole, half of the dipole is the car, half the dipole is the vertical antenna, um, there's probably quite a lot of... Uh, horizontal radiation coming from the car and therefore significant amount of high angle radiation coming that's why you can get some pretty decent signals on 40 meters mobile there we are now let's talk about the mystery of this band when i was first licensed back in the 1960s well back in 1960 actually uh, the 40 meter band was very predictable it was short skip during the day and it was long skip during the night and you could virtually guarantee that you could have some S9 signals on 40 metres during the day. And uh, I remember uh, discussing with some guys that were going to operate on the top of Ben Nevis, and they were going to operate on 80 metres, QRP on 80 metres. I said, no, go to 40 metres, because um, the antennas are going to be half the length, and uh, you'll get some really good reports. And they did, they were running 2 watts on the top of Ben Nevis, and they got some very good reports. And... It was very, very reliable. 40 metres for the chat band. If you wanted to have a chat with uh, guys in the UK during the day, then 40 metres was the band. It was far better than 80 metres. And, of course, antennas were half the size. But then, in recent times, there has been a change. The band does provide short skip during the day, but not reliably. And there's many occasions when the band is go, goes to sort of a longer skip. In other words... Uh, you'll find that uh, it's difficult to work UK stations, but you can work into into middle of Europe quite easily and work down into Italy and so forth, but uh, the shorter skip signals don't really appear reliably on 40 metres during the day. And it's a bit of a mystery, really, because it's been quite dramatic. And uh, talking to one or two G3s and G4s that go back to the sort of uh, the late 1990s, and they all agree that the band has changed, and I wonder why that's changed. What could possibly be the change? Well, I don't pretend to know. You may well have the answer. You may well experience the same, or you may not have experienced the same. But again, it would be interesting to hear from you as to what you think about the band, if you've been licensed long enough to go back to those sort of days in the 1970s, 80s, 90s, etc., and see how you feel the band has changed. But I stumbled across something recently which i i think i'd heard about but i hadn't really considered and that is the change in the magnetic field now i used to do a bit of flying back uh, about 30 odd years ago when my eyes were a lot better and uh, i used to fly from south end airports and uh, one end of the runway was known as zero six and zero six was basically the direction in which the runway ran uh, if you're approaching it from from that particular direction, it had a big, big uh, digit on the front of the runway or beginning of the runway zero six. And in fact, there was a a, a local disco um, that uh, was at very near the airport, and they called themselves the zero six. And I listened the other day, and I found that it was no longer zero six; it was zero five. And there has been a declara declination, I think it's the word declination, um, of the magnetic field. In other words, the, magnet, the magnetic field varies slightly to true north. And as far as I can make out, uh, for many, many years, like several hundred years, mm. the magnetic field uh, in the UK has always been to the west of true north. But for the first time in several hundred years, it moved east of true north. Has that got an effect on 40 metres? I don't know. Um, there may be some people out there that have got a better idea but whatever the reason is it seems to be fairly well documented that the 40 meter band has changed could it be that there's other cyclic effects out there as yet undiscovered i mean after all we've only been using radio in a meaningful way for the last 125 years or so perhaps you've got an answer to it i don't have an answer by the way i have just been listening on 40 meters, 7 megs with this lovely FTX1 field. And with my dipole, I got an S9 signal, just receiving an S9 signal from Italy. And he was talking to a Canadian station, a VE3, also S9. There we are.
some things you can't explain. Okay, well, um, just a sort of rambling video really about uh, 40 metres and uh, how I found it and be interested to know how you found it. So let me know in the comments below this video. In the meantime, thanks for your support on this channel. Much appreciated. You take care. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.